Back again, back again after the comeback of dreams. Erling Haaland is a Man City footballer still, and I can't believe it. A little, a little bit of a scare now, mind. So it was a very, uh, very kind of strange game. Nothing happened in the first half. It was the worst first half football I've ever watched. Worst first 45 minutes ever. But it kind of sprung into life at about 10 minutes in, and it was Joe Bellingham. That fella, that fella who always seems to pop up and score against us. And... Yeah, it looked pretty dusty down for about half an hour, but then, of course, John Stones, the Barnsley Beckenbauer with an absolute thunder cunt, and then Erling Haaland, who got his foot up higher over the goal post. So, you know what I mean? Sometimes it's just inevitable. Joe, how are you feeling? Absol- I, I don't know what to feel, to be honest. I think about... I was just trying to describe it to you last night after the game. I was so fuming. My blood pressure was so high that there was a genuine period of, like, sort of after 10 minutes after the game, I felt so floaty because everything just calmed down so quickly. Because it's like, in the end of the day, if we would have lost or we would have drawn, it's not that big a deal because we probably still would have qualified anyway. Like, I would have still been confident in us topping the group. But (laughs) my word, the way we played was fucking abysmal. It was Awful. It was so bad. That's one of the worst games that we'll probably play all season. It was terrible. We were two of us going forward. As you said, nothing happened in the first half. Probably one of the worst two halves of football that I have ever watched. There was nothing. <laughs> I Obviously, I've harped on enough about this Grealish and Mara's wing combo. Like As soon as I saw it in the lineup, I was like, we're, we're probably not going to score in the first half. Like I predicted 3-0 because I thought that he, you know, he'd actually go with you know something that works. He, he'll have actually realised that you know, Maris and Grealish do not work together. And he would have done me something else. But he didn't. And as soon as I saw it, I'm like, we are not scoring in the first half. Like, I am confident that we will not do anything. We'll do very little with them two on the pitch at the same time. And I mean, I'm right. I know my football club. I, I, I know the players that we have. Um, but at the same time, like, yeah, great comeback. We've, we've got this sort of... Uh, we've got this sort of... You hated this word in the preview. This aura. We're we're doing it now. We are the oh, aura club. It. We are the aura club. We are we're coming back from games where we're not usually coming back from. I mean, look, listen, we've had two shots on target and scored two goals. We didn't have a shot on target until the 80th minute when we scored a goal. Like, that is awful. That is unheard of from a city team. We're normally having 20 shots and like five on target and failing to score. That's what we're known for. Not for waiting until 10 minutes to go to have a shot and to score. That's that's unheard of. That's genuinely how poor we were. We look like a completely different team than we've looked over the past five years. But at the same time, it's the group stage. It's all about the results you get. It's all about qualifying as quickly as possible. So we take the win and we move on. One more game before the international break, um, which is Wolves on Saturday. The early kickoff, never back the early kickoff. I always say this, never back the early kickoff. Anthony Taylor, the ref, never back the early kickoff. (laughs) <laughs> but no listen I mean the player ratings and stuff is cycling through obviously you can have your say people in the chat but I think overall like it's not really worth like getting too angry about like of course I was absolutely livid like straight after the match because your emotions run high but it's not really worth like going too too far in detail and criticising too much yeah I, I completely agree. Before we go into the uh, into the proper players, who have we got? We have Dennis. We have Daniel. What happened to Shamrock Rovers? I will murder you, Daniel. Uh, Arjun's <laughs> here. Kerwin is here. When is Kerwin not here? What an absolute king. Glendon, Julian, and Dudley are also here. All the boys are in. Are, are you in Ireland? Of course I'm in Ireland. I love Ireland. But I tell you what to start with. We have to start with the sore tone. The one who sticks out like a sore tone in particular last night. Riyad Mahrez, I think, well, we gave him a four, did we? I don't have the right in front of me. Four. That's piss poor. That he deserved it as well. Joe said if we had lost, he'd have given him a two, and I would have completely agreed with him. <clears throat> I think in the history of this channel, we've only ever given someone, one person, a rating lower than this, and it was Eric Garcia for his tournament against Brighton. So that's kind of the level we are working with. He completely slowed down a counter-attack whenever he get the ball, it goes straight back to Stones or it goes straight back to Rodri. And they got sick of it. They eventually cut out the middleman and just tried spraying it up to the striker because they got sick and tired of him. It's telling. It's really, really telling that when Bernardo's on that right-hand side with Foden, I know Foden's more soft right now to the left last night, but when Alvarez is on that right-hand side, our press just looks better. Our press just looks on it, like, yeah, straight on the defence, straight on the keeper. We don't have that with Mara. I'm not trying to say he's lazy, his pressing just isn't nearly as good. Uh, but he's just pissed. Like, he's been really, really bad this season, and there's nothing we can do about it. 
no, you can't, you know, you can't skirt around the issue anymore. People were sort of holding out for this whole, well, Mares is like a, a big Champions League player for us. All right. Good. Focus, man. Focus. Anyway, um, there was... A... <laughs> There was this big talk of Mares as just this big game, big Champions League player for us. But, like, I was very sceptical of, you know, just saying, oh, well, well, as soon as the Champions League comes around, as soon as we're playing on Wednesday, you know, Wednesday, Tuesday, that sort of time, you know, he'll start putting it on. But, I mean, like, at the same time, like, it's not working. It's not working. He has to play in the cup competitions now. He has to try and pick up form if he can. Are you all right? Yeah, I just laughed at SL Grealish. <laughs> <laughs> I saw a comment before saying, of course, Hugh's going to hide in after a Grealish thing. But listen, <laughs> listen. That? that was Dennis, I think. It was Dennis, I think. Um, <laughs> have it, have it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Listen, listen, listen. He's on the big six tonight at 10 o'clock, so uh, he's not completely ducking. He will have to face the music later on tonight. <laughs> but uh, no, listen, uh, he, uh, we'll get on to him in due course, but on tomorrow's, it's literally just a case of like he can't he just can't play he can't play in the big games I, I cannot trust him um <laughs> sorry he's not said uh Selgris. sorry shoot Grealish is there the listen, end the narrative? listen we will get on to Jack Grealish in due course don't worry we will talk get the other wing about around right? get, get, the, get the force irritating sister out of the way right we will talk about main culprit number one which also <laughs> ties into Grealish um, which is Mares. Mares again like like I've been, I've been trying to say anyway Champions League player and he's failed to turn up in the Champions League like you said they cut him out there was a point in the first half where Stones would look to him and go I am not passing to you because I know straight where this is going I'm getting it back yeah, he'd, he'd look at Maras and go, I don't really want to pass to you because I'm it's either me going to get it back or it's going to go to a kanji. Like, all he did was pass backwards. I'd love to know the numbers. I'm not, if, I'm not, I'm not too arsed about going and getting the numbers, but I genuinely, I'd love to know the numbers on how many forward passes he completed. Like, it's, it can't be many. Like, they were all sideways or backwards. Like, his first touch, yeah, it's still great, but that can't be just it. That can't, you can't just have a good first touch so when the, you know, the ball switched across, you know, you control it really well. Because if you're going backwards, then you're back to square fucking one again. Like, what is the point? I don't understand. There is no risks being taken. There is no... I, I, I don't know what it is. It's like... It's a completely different player. It's almost like the Mares that we first saw. First season of Mares. It's completely atrocious. Like, I don't know whether it's... I, again, I've been hesitant to call it this sort of new contract thing where you look at players like Aubameyang and Salah and, you know, players like that who sign, you know, contract extensions with a pay rise and, you know, the performances just start to dip a little bit. But I don't want to say that, but I don't know what else to turn to, really. Like, nothing's happened. Like, you don't just drop off. Like, what, he's 30, 31? You don't just drop yeah. off like that in the space of a couple of months over the summer. Like, you don't... There's, yeah, not, there's not that big a drop off. Um, it's not FIFA. He just looks really out of it. He just doesn't look like he's very confident whatsoever. Like, he's trying to beat a man. He beat his force man, and he, he instantly stopped. It's almost as if he looks back and says, oh, i just done him. Next thing you know, he's just blocked. Like, he really just... He hasn't looked it. He hasn't looked on it at all, but, I mean, we can't really duck much out of Grealish as well. I was really... When we started off, when the game started, we were on the phone with each other, right? And Grealish was running that man, and I was like, it's not actually been too bad he's finally pulling the trigger all that but boy god i don't know what he just he was hooked before the hour and that like hour of him it just got more frustrating and frustrating and frustrating and frustrating because it's just every shot he took was blocked obviously they're on him like a rash there's nothing great deal about that but it's just he doesn't work against you'd call it a low block because it really didn't work against a low block what he was trying to do <laughs> I saw some analysis there on Twitter from Old Nabil and he said uh, he really looks like he's much better when teams are actually attacking. When you're playing a team that are going to attack you, like say Liverpool, he looks much better. And like Real Madrid had to do in the last 10 minutes, he really looked good at the Bernabeu. Maybe that's just what he has to be. I think you're going to campaign to move him into midfield though, I'd, I'd say, would you be? Mm, not quite yet. Not quite yet. Really? Um, you're, you're, you're giving him the leniency? <sighs> Yes and no. Um, I am starting to grow tired of continuously backing him, backing him through 
poor performances, backing him through, saying he will come good. Um, but like, I don't, I don't really know what to say. Like, he's he had a decent start. I'm not going to say good start to the season because he has no contributions. I can't say it's a good start to the season. He hasn't contributed. He had a decent start to the season because his overall performances were pretty okay. You know, it was something that he could build on. Um, and against Sevilla, he had another one of those games where no contributions, but he was really, really good. I liked what I saw from him in the hour that he got against Sevilla. Well, then we cut to here, and this is where it links to Mares. The common denominator is he has played his worst football when Mares has been on the opposite wing. Community Shield, yeah. dreadful. Mares is on the pitch with him. Second half against Bournemouth, we look toothless. Mares and Grealish were both on the pitch at the same time. When he's been on the pitch with Bernardo Silva or Alvarez or Foden, whoever it is on the pitch, he's looked much better. Yeah. He's looked miles mm-hmm. better. And I want to see him, like, given an extended run without Mares. I don't want to see Mares in the team because generally Grealish's performance dip. Of course, like... I mean, what what can you do? Like, Maris is still in the squad. If he plays with Maris, he's got to suck it up and, you know, still play well. Like, the others around him can have good games with Maris. Why can't he? But, like, it's I don't think it's, like, a coincidence anymore. I genuinely think that they are two the same. They are two the same. They have great control. They are very safe players where you can give them the ball and, you know, they're probably going to keep it. The reason why in the player ratings, Mahrez gets a four and Grealish gets a five, they are the two lowest. The reason why Grealish gets a bit of a step up, because at least he was sort of trying things at times. You know, he was trying to cut, to get a shot off here and there. I think he was a little bit hesitant with his shooting. That's something that I didn't like. When he got into them positions in the box where he's pulling the trigger, he's not getting past the first man who's two yards in front of him because he's taking too long to actually shoot. He's like, he's almost panicking and going, I want to pass, I want to pass, I want to pass. And then when he has to shoot, you know, there's a guy already in front of him, but I mean, like, that's up to him. It, it could be a confidence thing because he knows he hasn't got the stats and he knows that um, he's not a goal scorer. But at the same yeah. time, like, we're still looking for him to contribute. I also don't think the players on the left-hand side actually help him around them at all because he's playing on the left-hand side that is totally right-footed. He's wanting to cut in. Cancelo's yeah. wanting to cut in. Gundogan's wanting to cut in. It doesn't suit him. We have got, he's got no support for his strengths at the moment when we play like this. When we play with Mares on the other side, who, you know, he's got a, he's got a little bit more because I know Stones has played it right back, but at least he's right footed. You've got, got De Bruyne out there who's right footed, you know, who can go around the outside. So Mares does have that support. So he's kind of really got no excuse for having a poor game with Greenish. Like, he still needs to be better. He's still got to take it on him to, you know, become better. But we're still not playing to his strengths. Like, we haven't yet played to his strengths. His strengths are carrying the ball. Um, he's a very safe option, like I said, but, like, he still needs the support around him to, to flourish. That's why he's a better fit when Bernardo's in the team compared to Gundogan. That's why I think he'd be a better fit when we have Sergio Gomez in the team, you know, a natural left-footed left-back. I think that he'd mm. flourish in that sort of system, but he can't play with those players every week because we have to rotate the side. And if we're yeah. looking at that and going, he's a system player and he has to have certain players starting to get the best out of him, then his minutes are going to be limited because he, if he has to play with certain players... You know, he can't start every single week. It It's just not acceptable. He has to, you know, play with what's around him, essentially. The best players find a way to be good and have an impact on the game. If he truly believes that he is one of the best players and, or, you know, best players in his position at the club, then he needs to get a move on. Because, I'm quite frankly, I'm genuinely just sick of it right now because I want him to come good and I've, I've backed him to the hills. But, like, there becomes a point where I turn around and I go... Yeah, it's not working. Like he's he's just kind of there. He's just another body. Like there becomes a point where you just have to admit defeat, basically, and go. Yeah, we kind of for the money we paid, we yeah, we haven't got that quality. You know, it's yeah. I wouldn't go as far as as maybe you know flop because he'll still have his uses, but it's well, not hundred million. It's, it's it's not hundred million pounds worth of player. Put it that way. No, not at all. I, you know what? If it keeps up, I think. He had his little season for of adjustment last season. Nothing's working. Nothing's really changed. And we sound really negative. We won this game, right? We, we won this game. But we're starting off really negative. You have to get the negatives out of the way first yeah, because the there's a lot of glaring ones. 
if you're not here, if you're not here for a depression session, then don't worry, we'll ramp it up soon enough. But uh, Grealish, yeah, he needs to pick up. If he doesn't pick up, I will label him a flop because I'm. I feel like I'm harsh enough. And who else we got? Dara Morley, best beard on the planet. What happened to the beard? I don't want to talk about it. You taught me in the shade, and I bullied it. Uh, Kerry was still here. Big Morgan's in the top and top of the league. Th- that led to the goal. We can say, yeah, that's it. We'll get. We can kind of touch on the goal now. I think we get the kind of last bit of negative out of the way because there's not much we can really touch on. Negative wise, because we came off the high, but the goal was very, very strange. Now I thought we were about to concede beforehand when they won the corner. I thought we were about to concede. I'd look down for two seconds, next thing you know, they're on the edge of the box. But I, when we got when they got the ball back in. Bellingham came out of nowhere and, you know, I'm not going to lay all the blame on a can or anything like that, but he should have been tracked. And he was left open, he scored, but it was very, I thought it was a very weird goal. It's a, just, it looked like everything had stopped. And next, you know, Bill and Bellingham just spawned somewhere and heads it into the net. And you go 1-0 down, you just kind of have to get on with it. And what, how long did it take? It took, what, 25 minutes to get the goal then? Like, it was a slump of the 25 minutes. What did you think of the goal before we move on to the happiness? Hey, I think I I kind of want to just touch on Akanji as a whole. I saw, I think City Extra gave him man in the match, and I just don't see a world in which he was man in the match. I'm sorry, like, he mm. wasn't poor by any stretch of the imagination. The fence was, for the majority, untroubled um, a couple of times, maybe, yeah. but he's not man in the match. He was probably, in fact, I go as far to say, uh, you could say on the player ratings, that I thought he was... The worst out of our back four, I'm not saying again, not saying he was bad. I just think the rest around him were the better, you know, they contributed more. Um of yeah. course Stones Cancelo, they contributed to goals, Ake was just solid all around. Um but with Akanji, I think first half when Royce goes through and just puts it wide, tries to bend it in the far corner, he sent him to the shops, he sat him down on his ass. Like he genuinely like I, I get it, like throw your body at the ball and that, but he got, he, got sent, he got sent, he got put straight on his ass. And then for the goal, like, there's just no awareness. Bell- he's in front of Bellingham. He, you know, the cross is coming in. Uh, well, it was actually a, a shot more than a cross, really, wasn't it? That just, you yeah. know, if, if Bellingham doesn't get a touch, then Edison probably saves it. Um, but um, yeah, he's in front of Bellingham. I think he should have a bit more awareness. I think that's on him to take control of the situation. You know, the ball is coming in. He should, as a defender, his natural instinct should be to clear the ball. Um, you yeah. shouldn't be waiting for your goalkeeper to make a safe goal. Oh, my goalkeeper's better than me. He'll save it. Clear the ball. You're a defender. The goalkeeper's the last mm-hmm. line of defence. Um, but overall, like, he's not fully at fault for the goal. Because, I mean, I wasn't expecting Bellingham to get on the end of that, to be quite honest with you. There was a couple of people so, uh, stood in an offside position as well. So it was like, it was all over the place. It was like chaos, really. But I still think he takes majority blame for the goal, for me at least, anyways. Um but overall, like, it's not like a poor performance. I just think that I didn't really see too much to suggest that he was like too good, really. And I, I saw people saying that he was good again. I don't know whether it's because you know the the whole signing was a uh, sort of downplayed. As he's you know he's fifteen million. He's coming to be fourth or fifth choice when everyone's fit. And you know when he has a decent game, it looks like a good game because the yeah. expectations weren't necessarily high, but. For me, I hold everyone at like the highest level because we compete at the highest level. So I'm looking for that sort of performance, and I just thought he was okay. Yeah, you can't treat anyone as if they have some like walking against them. That if they turn out a half decent performance, it's saying like, "Oh, that's brilliant." I can't even think of a player off the top of my head, but you can't look at someone who puts in a good performance. I thought, was, I thought he's perfectly fine. It looks very comfortable on the ball, but you can't look at that and and say, oh, he was brilliant, he was outstanding because he only paid 15 million for him. It's not how it works. It's You have to judge him to the level to send a half set. And he was good. I thought he was fine. I think, again, he can lump a bit of blame on for the goal. I'm not going to I'm not gonna chill him out over. I don't care enough, especially since he won. But I think he's been I think he's been fairly solid since we got him. So I'm more than happy with him. But, yeah, that's it's kind of a weird one. Actually, I'm kind of looking in this. I know you'll have a little bit of an opinion on this, Joe, right? Uh, Kev was wank and got man in the match. He was absolutely dog shit. I thought, right? I thought it was a really, really poor performance. And nothing was coming out from. Uh, we did a research. Yeah, seventy percent pass accuracy from the Brian, which is really, really low, even compared to the ones we pulled up for the fifty minute video. If you ever watched that, it was really, really low. But he got man in the match. I'll be honest. I don't know who I'd give man in the match. Joe really started his right, and he gave Stones man in the match. I don't know who I would have given it to because I just talked about that many 
poor to mid performances. I still can't believe he conned his way to it, though, right? Now, I don't care. Again, it's an individual award. It's fine. He should not be winning that. There has to be an investigation into who are doing this because I'm telling you now, if there was better markets, I'd be looking at where these men's money are going because it is an appalling decision. Joe. Yes, the Kevin De Bruyne man. <laughs> you come to me for the answers. Um, that's the second man in the match in two Champions League games that he just hasn't deserved. Um, yeah. just to put it simply like he wasn't man of the match against Sevilla he wasn't man of the match here but he wins the awards because you know he gets, he gets two assists he gets an assist in each reputation. of the games yeah reputation he gets an assist in each of the games so you kind of go well you know he contributed he he's got the best yesterday? yeah he got the assist for Stones did he? I thought, I thought Rodri passed it never mind go on he got the assist for Stones where he passed it back to him it's like a bus gets assist where he just kind of lays it off and then he scores a screamer and Brian gets the credit for it like it's nothing, nothing, nothing performance again. Seventy percent pass accuracy. It's fucking dreadful at this point. Like, I, I, I want to continue saying like, you can't take him off. You can't drop him because he just comes up with these moments. But he didn't come up with a moment yesterday. I know he got the assist, but it's not a moment. He literally just passed it side. In fact, he passed it backwards, and yeah. Stones just bangs it from the edge of the box. Like, that's not a moment. That's just him. You know. Keeping the ball, he didn't. You know, he didn't know Stones was going to shoot. He probably didn't think he was going to shoot. It's a centre half, fuck's sake. What's he doing on the edge of the box? Fuck's <laughs> sake! <laughs> um, like it's poor. I wanted to give him a five, but I gave Greedish a five, and I can't say he was, you know, as bad he as Greedish. He was. His, it, it was bit, I'd yeah. say he is considerably better than Greedish. His performance was considerably better than Greedish's last night. But uh, yeah, it, it does get to a point where you're looking at him. Constantly hit the force man, constantly just misplace a pass. Oh, in the moment, I want to talk about him. corners actually, because he either yeah. hit the first man, <laughs> hit the second man, and there was one where he tried to put it on the edge of the box to Mares and he cleared <laughs> fucking the everyone. Force one. It was the force one, wasn't it? He cleared everyone, including <laughs> Mares. He cleared <laughs> everyone, and then he's went, you know, I'm not going to try this again, and couldn't beat the first or second man. Like, it's dread. Mm. At what point do you just go, listen, I know you're a clean striker with a ball, but take your ass off fucking corners, please. You cannot Grow beat up. the first man. Grow up. Give it to someone else. Like, seriously. I don't know how many times. I've seen it in the flesh enough times to give me a fucking migraine. We cannot. It's not even just a De Bruyne thing. I've been saying this all season. Foden's a massive culprit for this as well. No one can beat the first man. It's annoying. It's frustrating. The amount of set pieces we scored last season, imagine how many we would have scored if we would have beat the first man. It actually, <laughs> it's actually horrible to think about because last season, again, it, last season was one of those kind of standard things where we actually scored off set pieces and it was really, really strange because especially come the end of the season, we scored off a good few because the Bruyne was beating the first man. He's not now. I don't think Gundogan even got a lick of a corner over that side, which was strange considering the, the passes that were going in. They started off at the start. Do you remember at the start? I think it was the start of this season. They were playing the short corners and crossing it. Like they were doing the short corners and the inswing and cross. That worked a lot better. Yeah, it worked so because the, the defence comes out. Because once the corner's been taken, the yeah. defence goes out to try and yeah. see if they could play anyone offside. So you're less likely to hit the first man. <laughs> then I say go back to that. But it was really poor. Again, just that, that facet. I think, I think we should move on to the positives at this, but that facet was just poor. And again, if I'd I'd want to be checking these lads, Paddy Power and Boys Sports account, the boys who are deciding this, the people on the UEFA uh, man the match decide us, I want to check that Paddy Power and Boys Sports account because if there's a market for the Brian man the match, I'm sorry, they are betting everything on it. But yeah, I think we can kind of leave that off and uh, we'll leave that off in the little negative part. We won! <laughs> we won! <laughs> we got our three points, which leaves us what about we have Copenhagen, Copenhagen, Copenhagen back to back, right? Which you'd be look without trying to sound as without trying to sound up my own arse, I'd expect City to go out and win the ball with those guys. Meaning that we have a relatively sure enough thing going into match day five and six, which I am happy about because it means we can rest a couple of players, it means we can see a bit more of Alvarez starting. Maybe see him in a maybe see him in a mixture of positions as well, which I'd be more than happy to see. But yeah, it's it, that win. That win took a lot. Of, I don't say took a lot of the shoulders. I was always thought we we're going to qualify. I always said we we're going to go top of the week. But that will leave a match or two. That will leave an extra games respite, if you please, for a couple of hours to get a game. But 
I think um, I was only reading this earlier with about I think Sam Lee had written it on the on the athletic. He said, "Can City actually hold this up?" I think we should run a poll, right? I I want to I want to run this poll. Can City constantly keep doing this? Can they keep being the comeback kings? Can they keep grabbing goals in the last couple of minutes? Because again, we're known for it. It's almost as if that typical City thing is turning into they're gonna score, even when they're two 0 down. It's like they're gonna win again. Can City keep that up, Joe? Realistically. I'm going to run a poll now with three options. Yeah, you run the poll, then I'll, I'll talk while you do it. But that shouldn't be possible to do. That really shouldn't be. But we've been doing it for a while now. Like, again, you have to look back at Villa. We did it there. We did it at Palace this year. We did it at Newcastle this year. We done it last night. We've done it all those times. Is it actually, is it possible? Is it genuinely possible to keep this up? I'm going to vote yes on that, you know. Uh, Joe. I was going to put a third option on the poll just saying Haaland because I mean he's kind of the reason why we keep coming back but I'm just going to leave it simple yes or no um, vote on that poll please I will end it in sort of 5-10 minutes you know let people vote on it people coming in um, can we keep coming back yeah of course we fucking can why Why not <laughs> why not why can we not keep coming back when you've got this we... fucking test tube fucking mutant <laughs> 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 When you've got this silly, lanky, karate-kicking, fucking man-bun, ponytail man. Careful. Listen, when you've got that man up front, why can you not just come back all the time? I mean, we were 2-0 down against Crystal Palace. We scored four goals in the second half. Hmm. I mean, like, we were two goals down against Newcastle. We scored two. Um, I mean, we did it on the last day last season. Without him, we scored three and five about five, six, seven minutes at Aston Villa. Seven we minutes or seven, seven, seven minutes. Seven, seven minutes, minutes without that man. Like, of course, we struggled to do it for the last couple of seasons because we didn't have anyone who would reliably put the ball in the back of the net. But we still did it. Now we've got him. Yeah. Even more chance we're going to do it. it isn't even more chance we've got to do it. I mean, he's, he's been well looked after. He has been... Um, He's been subbed off. He's not completing 90 minutes very often unless we're chasing a game. You need a goal. Um, you know, and, you know, he's still got room to grow. He's still going to get better. We're, we're, well, he is growing. He is still growing. He's going to be about six he or is seven. He's six or five. He's nearly my Shut up. Um, he's going to keep growing in this. He's going to keep growing in this system, man. He will, he will get better. He will end up getting, he will end up satisfying Sky Sports. He will end up getting touches of the football. Um, he can, he can get five touches and score five goals. I think was his quote. That is a dream land. Well, I'm looking out here. There's 28 people watching. There's 31 likes. We're pushing two and a, three and a half. I think he said two and a half. We're pushing three and a half. About 80 subscribers off. So if you could share it around, like, comment. You know yourself. Put, have that say in the live chat. You can see the ratings. You can see the players. You hear our opinions. Have the crack, right? Have the crack, as all I say. But yeah, any support is absolutely massive. We mentioned Haaland. I think it's only fair we talk about him again. I don't. Is it 30? It's 30 in, in, in 10, is it? I don't think so. <laughs> I think it's, it's less games. I'll be honest with you. I am not 100%. Tell you what, tell me in the comments, right? But either way, the the gold game ratio gold to minute ratio is fucking outstanding he is a monster i still not sure if he's completed a 90 no he has he completed one at newcastle he? he's not completing 90s very often either so that's that is fairly nice one but fuck me he is a different breed i have never seen anyone with this power to just snap his fingers and pull two goals out of his ass it's ridiculous like again, I bring it back to the better markets. He's was one to three to score any time last night, two to five on a normal day. It is magnificent. It, it's beautiful to watch. I, honestly, he is a king. He is a a big Norwegian king. And he's he's here and he's he's torn everything around. Our second highest scorer has three goals. So we said, I think we kind of uh, we somewhat predicted this, didn't we, last year when we said that the goal spread wouldn't be would be particularly kind on other players. But I don't care. If we're getting results, if we're being pulled out of a hole by this by this six foot five blonde man, I'm more than happy for it. I mean, listen, I've been frantically searching trying to get this because it is 30, uh, 13 goals. And I think, I think it's nine games. Um, but I am trying to find a confirmation without... That's definitely not nine games. <laughs> not only seven games into the Premier League. Uh, yeah, ninth appearance. 13 in nine. 
13 goals in nine games. Sky Sports did a calculation of how many goals he'd score oh, if he keeps 102 this. 102 goals or something. If City were to reach the final of every single competition they played in and Haaland played every single game of the season, he would finish the season, not the year, the season on 102 <laughs> goals in all competitions. Are you having a fucking giggle? That is mental. It's not going to happen because he will not play every single game. And I, I, I don't think we'll reach the final of every single competition. I think one of the You're domestic... Cup. Listen, listen, FA Cup is my, is my enemy. My enemy. I hate the FA oh, you Cup. Hate it. You hate the FA Cup. You hate FA Cup, we always do shit in it. We, we, we win it or we lose to someone that we shouldn't. It always happens. Oh, well. I, I just That's don't about right. Carabao Cup, clear by yeah, a long that's way. That's where the dreams are. Anyway, that is where the that, dreams that's, are. That's, you know, Harland bucket list. Carabao Cup, top to the list. Um, yeah, he wouldn't have joined if, if, if it wasn't on the list. <laughs> that's how I see it, personally. But like 102 if he carries on. 103 no sky said 102 if he carries on uh yeah 102 goals in all club competitions if he continues um this goal scoring record and plays every single game and we reach all finals that is insane um it's i don't right. really know what to say it's it's, it's 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 all right now but uh that is quite simply incredible um to be honest because i mean our top goal scorer of all time only has what 260 something goals that's almost half in a season. I what? just want to raise a toast. <laughs> I just want to raise a toast, right? Uh, I can remind of it. Thank you, Daniel Levy, for not letting Harry Kane come to Manchester. Charlie Kane. Charlie Kane, club legend, statue needed. Oh what my a god! What an agent for Harry Kane, right? Fifty million. Yeah. Be, Fifty million. Him, he could be getting the move to Bayern. Actually, funny. I know this is more so the reveal, but he could be getting a move to Bayern next year. That'd be pretty interesting. Now they have. Sadio Mane. Fifty Leo million. Is actually class. 50 million. Hate, so. He keeps going around in my 50, head. Fifty million. Fifty one million. Fifty one million. <laughs> oh. But remember, it's going to cost us two hundred fifty, three hundred million. Oh, yeah, sky, sky cover. One man. Sky cover. Uh, are we both in Ireland? No, I'm in Ireland. He's not in Ireland. He's from uh, England. I'm from Ireland. The best country in the world. The best idea of a country in the world. Centurions <laughs> part two. Yes. Yes, Centurions Part 2. I very much so feel it is in Come On Well. We dropped four points. Wait, is it 115 to play for? 112 to play for? We've dropped... Is it only four? four? I know yeah, two draws. Yeah, two lost. draws. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because uh, we, we actually came back against uh, Crystal Palace this time. Oh, what a time. Yeah, well, listen, we're on. We're currently on track for... Fuck you, Scout. It's Brilliant, Dan. Thanks. It's... It's not. It's not going to happen. Like we're not going to go invincible. I no. doubt we're going to get a hundred points. Oh, I don't. Um, yeah, I'm not real now. I I'm not really now. I also hope we go invincible because you go bald and that is just going to be absolutely incredible. Um, you've got to grow out your beard though. I want you to look uh, as as much like Pep Guardiola as you can. You know what I mean? Oh my God, get him! Sorry, two point five. Need one more. Um, yeah. listen, it's. Crazy the goals that this man is scoring, and like, there's no reason why we can't. We've run a poll in a stream in the past. Can we go invincible? You know, I, I we can we get a can. can we get a hundred points again? We can do both. There is no reason that we cannot do both. Which would be, you would have to say, the greatest Premier League side of all time, undenied, I undisputed. I, I think we already are. I think that Centurion season is the greatest Premier League side of all time. But if we do it again this season and go undefeated, the undisputed, the greatest, probably the greatest team of all time, you could say, going unbeaten for a whole league campaign. Just the greatest team of all time. Just greatest team of all time. If you go unbeaten for a whole entire 38 league game season and get 100 points, meaning you win about 30 games, 32 games, something like that, are you fucking mental? Are you mental? See, if you win any it, other trophies, are you, are you on about best team all in of all time? It would be one of the greatest teams of all time and the greatest English side of all time. I have no doubts about that. This yeah. is undeniable greatest English side of all time. You can't. No one has oh, ever yeah. done that. I do, no I do one has ever done I, that. Again, okay. how long? How long is left in that poll before you can run another? One? Um. I don't know actually. Oh, yeah, I have a feeling it'd be fairly lopsided now, but run another one later. I just say our city did greatest Listen, team. Can we keep coming back? Seventy-eight percent say yes of nineteen voters. 
So we can keep coming back. I think as long as we keep Haaland fit, then yes, there's no reason why we can. And even if he's not fit, full faith in Alvarez, baby. He's a baller. A little demon. Yeah, anyway, next poll is going to be, are we the greatest side ever? Simple as that. I'll say you the greatest you know side what? ever. Greatest Premier League side. Put down greatest Premier League side. I say the greatest Premier League side. No, because everyone's going to say now for the greatest side because I stand by 10 11 Barcelona are the oh, greatest. No, six, six, six trophies is undeniable. Like, yeah. you're not going to top that. Can't it's literally a, impossible for us to win six trophies in the season. <laughs> Unless we win your Euro- European competition, win the Super Cup and the Club World Cup the season after, and then win back to back European. I think, the, I, think the Club World Cup, I think the Club World Cup has to count towards the season before. Like, as in the year you win the Champions League. I'm actually, I want to run another poll after this. If majority say yes, I want to ask which one they think is the best. I think I know the answer. But I am interested to see who thinks which side is better. So we had a few good sides. You um, can, I tell you what you can do, right? We can throw in a poll. Instead of doing a yes or no, you can do like... I've, I've already, I've I've already done the yes or no, do, big I was going to say, you could have done, done that uh, in Halo Liverpool team. Could have done uh, 99 United. Could have done... A lot of people okay. aren't old enough to remember those Chelsea. teams. Chelsea 04, 04. A lot of, te- a lot of people in this chat, I'd, I'd, I'd say a lot of them, no, maybe not a lot, but some of them probably won't remember those teams. And there's a lot of bias flying about. Derby, Derby 07, 08, clear, <laughs> fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> the record low point along with uh, Paul Jewell's unfortunate uh, scandal halfway through the season. 7-8 United, that's fair enough as well. That was... Um, yeah, that was what that was a Moscow Champions League final. What happened? What happened? Champions League final at that John? Uh, Salford United. I am in the middle between Invincible and Centurion. I think we get it. Uh, Invincible team okay. drew twelve games. The Centurion yeah. team didn't drop points in twelve games as a total. Yeah, that's that's kind of damning, isn't it? We lost. Honest, we I... lost two games because one of them we threw away because we wanted to come back in the Champions League, and the other one was Anfield, which we almost got a point from. Yeah, because Alex Oxlade only exists to score fucking exactly. score. Just, that is literally it. <laughs> like, we, st- we also get brownie points for the season after for stopping Liverpool for winning the league unbeaten <laughs> and 100 yeah. points in the same season. <laughs> We're talking yeah, about us doing it this season. Up. We're talking about us sure doing up. 100 points invincible. We stopped Liverpool from doing that exact same thing <laughs> four <laughs> years ago. <laughs> Dejan Lovren stopped them from doing that two years in a row. Hold tight, Watford. Hold tight, three nil. Troy Deeney. Ismail Assar, what a king. But again, we've kind of gone off on a bit of a tangent, really, haven't we? Yeah, I think we should maybe swerve back to the Champions League. Yeah, um, where did this come from? This came from, from right. this came from us talking about Haaland and you know, can we keep coming back in games? You know, can we stay unbeaten? Like, yeah, we'll talk. This... About, I tell you what, I think we we'll move on to the man the match. Yeah, we need to talk about Stones, uh, the Barnsley Beckenbauer. Wag, wag, generals. Listen, so, I'm going to let you go have on. your say because... Uh, oh, I'll have my say. You have this your say because Stones. I put in man of the match and you weren't sure, so you, you, you fire away. I wasn't sure, but I'm confident in saying that. Now, I think I, I, think I might get cooked for this. I think John Stones is the best friend of the club. I love John Stones to death. I think John Stones technically on the ball is unbelievable. You asked me two years ago, I wouldn't have said he was anywhere near it. On the ball, he's unbelievable. His recovery pace even now is very good. Aerially, he's brilliant. He's two foot he's two footed. You don't need to work on sky spots and all that. But he is fantastic. It takes a lot of balls to shoot from there. I couldn't care that I don't care. I don't know what the keeper's doing. Don't know what the goalie's doing, Tom. But Where do you want your statue, John there. Stones? Where do you want your statue, John Stones? He is he's Formed his way back into the team, I think, in my opinion. Again, we always said it was Ake and Sevilles. I think John Stones has officially got back. I don't. I thought Ake was half decent as well. John Stones is just that guy. John Stones turns up when things are needed to be. He's like, Batman, he's class. Joe, I can't go on about him because I'm just going to keep talking about him for about three years. Play him, controversial opinion, play him at right back. Play him at See, back. I'm actually for this. I'm genuinely for this. And I just said he's the best and I have to the club. Play him at right. We've got three fantastic centre halves. <laughs> Play John Stones as a right back. The versatility in terms of systems and approach, the way that we play games, he can do either. If we want to go back to the three at the back, 
you can do that as a right back. If we want to continue with the two inverted fullbacks, he has the technical quality to be able to do that. I've said yeah. from time, I've said since he came to the club, he could easily play as a number six. He could easily play as a defensive midfielder. He has the technical I remember, ability. I remember we were talking about that ages ago before we saw Phillips, right? Me and Joe were talking about if you had to sign a six, Joe said, we don't need to sign a six. We can start with a five and have John Stallings sit in the six. And you know what's mad? I actually have agreed with that at the time. Listen, you, you didn't agree with it when I first said it, though. You didn't agree with me when I first said that. But I listen, didn't actually. Generally, I didn't. No, no, no. I, I, I thought it was a bit funky. But I took, uh, I took my time to think about it. He has the technical ability to play that right-back role, the inverted right-back role, better than Kyle Walker. So why should he not be playing at right back for the foreseeable future? If you have a back four when everybody's fit of Cancelo, Laporte, Diaz, Stones, like you can do many things with that back four. You can go to a three. You can make Stones invert because he has, you know, like I keep banging this drum, he has the technical ability. He has the ball carrying ability to run with the ball. He has the passing range. Like, he can do that role. He's a much better fit than Walker. If we're going to keep yeah. this two inverted fullbacks, then just Walker basically becomes obsolete, unfortunately. It's unfor- um, yeah, it's really unfortunate because Kyle Walker is that guy and has been that guy for years. I mean, you saw how much we missed him at, uh, in the Madrid game last year. But I do agree with you. I think if you need someone as technically gifted as a John Stones, then you've got John Stones. Play John Stones. Because, again, he played out, out of position last night. He was unreal. He was really, really good. I, I say he's unreal. I thought he was. I just thought he was very good. The biggest I, part again, about me, the biggest part about me that loves Stones at right back is the forward runs. Because I, I see him do it from oh, centre half. Yeah. Jesus and Christ, he pulled that out man of it, is it? on a mission. Remember Leeds a couple of years ago when we lost? He was playing as a number ten because we had no creativity. I remember put him on any time scorer about twenty remember, minutes ago. On that remember, that, remember that game? The man hangs around yes. the penalty area when he plays at right back, and he's because he's like his on ball ability is so good. He can hit a ball. He can hit a ball. Like he's such a clean striker at a ball. His his technique is great, which is why he's so suited to that. Because if he finds himself on the edge of the box, you you what are you doing? Sorry, just went three nil to Patrick Skeeter. Stop <clears throat> focusing on your bets. Look okay. off. Um, because his technique is so good, like you don't put it past him scoring. And we've seen, I think it was Sporting last year, he ended up in the fucking box. He ended up in the penalty area from a crossing situation. Like, And that is a good thing because he's tall. He can get on the end of a cross. It's another threat. So I'd keep playing him there. I think, you know, because yeah. of the fact that he has a bit of pace about him, he can feasibly play that walker role of you've got a son on that side because he's quick enough he could probably keep up with him and because he's a natural yep. center half like it defensively you know he's going to be good already and it's another threat having three center halves on the pitch but one of them playing at fullback you've got another threat from a set piece you got another threat from a set piece so you know i think keep him there he's a much better fit than walker there um yeah, and it means we can have the balance over the centre back too. I am a big, 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 big fan of a left footer and a right footer in a centre back pairing. So yeah, that makes us, you horny, doesn't it? It, it gives us the balance in defence while also keeping Stones in the team, who's just got so much quality about him. And I think overall that we don't even need to replace Carl Walker because we've already got a replacement. <laughs> Sorry, I'm just saying John Costa's comment there. Yeah, that's ridiculous. Uh, yeah, I do completely agree. I think having John Stones as that flying right back it, imagine hearing that now a couple of years ago having John Stones as a flying right back might just be the way it's also fun to watch <laughs> it's, Sorry? Very, it's also very it's fun very to watch fun. Know, do you remember we were when we were at the uh, the Villa match he started right back and I actually thought he was really good yeah it's a shame that you had Mares in front of him and Fernandinho was starting centre don't worry about it don't worry about it don't worry. like whenever he's played right back he's been like one of our best players on yeah. the pitch like because it's just his thing is as well, right? Everyone knows he's big, right? But great feet for a big man. Of speed, <laughs> yes, baby, you, the whole narrative of speed, you put off the ball too easy. That's not the case anymore. When you have, like, again, Kyle Walker is a big fella as well. He's six foot as a right back. He just can kind of steamroll through players. John Sounds has that as well. Because, again, his technical ability is off the chart, especially for a centre back. I don't want to say he's wasted a centre back because that would be wrong. But when you have a system as demanding as your on the ball presence, He's fantastic at right back. Again, I mentioned it earlier, recovery pace, he has it. 
like the defensive IQ, he has it. The technical ability, he has it. Just play him there. I thought, I like, I thought he was re- again. He was really good last night. It kind of gave the balance to Cancelo. I didn't think Cancelo was particularly great until the goal, until the the Haaland goal. I didn't think he was particularly great. So there's still a balance though. Like, and again, there wasn't a Diaz, it was an Akanji and an Ake. Having a Diaz in the port in there with John Stones the other side of him, that, that kind of gets me going. You John know what I mean? Stones that, that, is better I, than your right back. That is the message what? we're trying to convey. Your right back is player. inferior <laughs> to John Stones. <laughs> uh, right, hang on, hang on. One more part. Is John Stones the best right back in the league? <laughs> we'll do a poll for John Stones. John Stones, go right do back. Do a yes, do a yes and yes. Uh, yeah, Stones right back. Better than Trent, James, Akimi, Walker, Carvajal, etc. You're dead right, Dennis. You are dead fucking right. We haven't been on an hour, but on 50 minutes. It's our aunt and as we can really run through. Um, and you want to shout out Show Shout out Istanbul, Basic Skechere, and Lassina Traore. Oh, oh. There's no reason to. I do want to highlight Rodri. I do want to highlight Rodri, actually. Yes. Yes. Because before we scored, when we looked completely incompetent, he was the only player trying. He was in stuck. He actually got booked. And I'm like, what's he getting booked for? It's like, oh, yeah, he's actually trying to make (laughs) things happen. I I thought he was great. I thought he was, again, like a defense. Yeah, because, like, overall, like, when we actually kicked it up a gear, didn't really do much. Like, defensive work, he didn't have to yeah. do much. Like, he was trying. I never said he was outstanding, but he had, he put in the effort. Um, I yeah, think yeah. There were, I think, um, I think City Axtra and City Report gave him a six. I thought it was better than that. I thought it was the only player trying when we were playing poor. I think he was trying to make, you know, try and keep it ticking, keep things going. He's not a creative player. Um, but, you know, he tried, he tried. And I, I do love to see that. It's almost like he goes underappreciated. I think I gave Gundogan a six as well. Like, he did nothing wrong, but the yeah. game just required a higher tempo and a, a bit more energy. So that's why Bernardo Silva came on. Nothing because, not because Gundogan was bad. It was all right at keeping things going in the midfield, just controlling the ball. Yeah. But we just needed more energy. We needed something, you know, we needed to up the tempo. We were chasing a game. But um, anyway, here's the part you've great, got. You've got. He's a great pace setter, Gundogan. He's a great kind of what the the level he's walking at is the level that the game is going to go Lads, usually hanging John like, Stone's yes. got right back yes but yes yes but in brackets <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> uh, look at people voting a yes but in brackets thinking it's a no uh, we've got you we, we've got we've got your picture um, no we but I think um, yeah the Gunman's just such a good pacemaker he is like Whatever, whatever way he's moving is the way the game is going to move. It flows to his tempo, it flows to the Bruyne's tempo. That midfield, when they are together, look really good. They're able to set pace very well. And that's why we've kind of been leaning on Bernardo at the right this season because it's been working because Gundogan's on top form. De Bruyne started off really well, especially statistically. I thought he started off really well. Last couple of games, not so, not much, not so much is the word I'm trying to get out there. You pulled out the, the Rodri is a very creative card. I find this mad about Rodri, right? You don't take for a goal scorer, you don't take for a creator. He has one of those... I, you know what? I think I'm willing to call it a clutch, Jim. When something is needed, he can pull it out. If you need someone to play a cross-field ball to a wide, out, to, to a wide open winger, Rodri is going to pull it out. Rodri will pull out a ton of bass when you need it. Rodri is that guy, man. Rodri clutch is just... So good. He, he's got he got that dog in him. Rodri has that dog in him. I Chris think Paul, I think, he's a huge three. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no. I think it's it's like a like a Rodri and Gundogan. Like they're great. Like obviously Rodri's just great to have in there because he's just so controlling. Yeah. I think I do, and I also just go a little bit more in depth in Gundogan. He's a, he's a bit weird, really, isn't he? Because he's so good to start off a game because he's so calm and. You know, when when we go through that first sort of five, ten minutes where, you know, sometimes we just start really fast and it doesn't really matter, but so, uh, there's a lot of the times in games, first five, ten minutes, where teams will literally try and get in our faces for the first ten minutes, like proper, you know, Gangnam Press style, Jurgen Klopp's Gangnam, tricky so. reds. Um, no, genuinely, like you notice it sometimes when the first ten minutes, they literally, they run, they sprint for the first ten minutes at us, trying to put us under pressure. And, you know, if they can... Yeah, off- I got- 
breaks, gone the one and a half. But if they forget. if they can offset us in that first ten minutes where they are sprinting after us, then maybe that has an effect on the whole game. But like that is their yeah. best chance, really, because if we find our rhythm, then it's incredibly hard to get the ball back. Um, mm. So they they try and run at us, which is why Gundogan's good to start a game because you know he's a calm presence on the ball. Um, yeah. He's a, you know he's a man that you can look to. Same thing with Roger, but he's also like a player that you would not want to be playing 90 minutes because the tempo with him on the pitch isn't as high because he's not as quick he's not as energetic he's that calm player he's not that sort of you know busy workhorse um and he's not he's not really the biggest he can create he's not the biggest creator he's more of a goal scorer which is Mm -hmm. my other point of you also you want him to play the first 10 15 minutes but you also want him to play the last sort of 20 minutes yeah. um, when you're chasing a game because he can get you a goal so he's, he's, he's a weird position really where he kind of just coasts through the game and you know he's he'll he'll help settle things down and be calm and help us um when we're under a bit of pressure and he'll pop up with a goal in a moment where we need it but overall like his general impact it just goes under the radar like he's he is just one of them weird players where you want the first 10 and you want the last 10 but the in-between stuff like he's just there you can do to help out. you can like You'd rather have a Bernardo Silva because he's going to run more, he's going to press more, um, he's a bit more fluid because he's a bit quicker, you know, he's more energy about him. But mm. Gundogan's presence in, like, starting games and seeing out games um, or chasing games is unmatched. Like, it's a weird position where it doesn't matter, like, if you start him or if he comes on. Like, it doesn't matter as long as he has a, as long as he has a part to play in the game. Um, it's going to help you get a result and... I hope he signs a like a at least a one year contract extension. Man, it'd be heartbroken yeah. if he leaves. I don't think he will. I think I think he's he's club captain. He's too ungrand. I think he's too ungrand to leave. But then again, I think I said that about Fernandinho as well. Yes, I you know overall I am dead happy. It's a tough one on Saturday though. It really is. We're not going to preview it yet. I say for the last five minutes we sit down and talk about the rest of Champions League. You know that we can do. Yeah, I mean what. I, I think well, we, we should talk about the. Right there. We just tried to fill it. We just tried to fill it there. We Let talk me about the. the I'll, I'll end the poll. Yes, put in brackets one, eighty percent. So John Stones is now the greatest right back of all time. Yeah, um, d- d- fuck you. He doesn't know that. <laughs> I, I, I not I, not I general not fair. general champions. Talk more about the English teams. That's the ones that we want to focus yeah, on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Special shout just before just before we go in, into the the English. Here, special shout out to Paris and Ireland for taking Bayern's top scorer. Still losing two now. Uh, Liverpool, the same bracket as us. Very, very, very fortunate. But sometimes it just needs to happen. That Thiago fella is quite good at football. But I'll tell you who's better at football. Mohamed Kudus, what a fucking player. He's done it against Rangers. He's done it against Liverpool. That man can hit a ball. That man is pure with it. What do you think of him? I don't think we've ever had, actually had a discussion about Mohamed Kudus. It's, it's a good player. Very I mean, player. he's a he's a very good player. I'm not, I'm not campaigning for City to go inside him though. Um, no, 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 nothing like no. that. He's a good player. He's a he's a weird player because he's, he's he plays in a position that not a lot of teams use, like sort of a mm. false nine, number a false 10. nine shadow striker. Yeah, like off. it's 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 a weird position, but I mean, it worked. He scored a goal. He made Virgil Van Dijk yeah. look like Liam Gallagher again, hands behind his back. Um, he I'm said saying, maybe. He's, he, he, I mean, listen, I don't think defending from Van Dijk was bad. I think they're just looking for a reason to, to, to kick a oh, man God. while he's I down. I thought it was very harsh. I thought it was very um, fucking harsh. But the finish from uh, Kudus was great. Um, yeah. I think, again, they're in, they're in a similar boat where they're trying to adapt to things happening around them. Like, we're still trying to put the finishing touches on the new players that we've got in, and they're still trying to put the finishing touches on the new players that they've got in, and players having to chop and change constantly because they've got lots of injuries. Um so of of course they're just they're just getting there really they're also just they're dealing with things how it comes to them um there's not really mm-hmm. much else that they can do if they can get results they can get results but they are far far off the pace right now um which is why we need to capitalize and yeah. get our group wrapped up so we can go focus on the league and hope that they slip up a bit while they're trying to you know completely gel together yeah. and get players back so that's that's another reason why the win was so important we beat Copenhagen back to back we could be qualified and then yeah. that's it. We just focus on the league because from now until the end of the season, it is three games a week. You're playing weekend midweek till the end of the season. 
and mm -hmm. there's games to be rearranged still. I don't know where they're going to fit them in, but there are games to be rearranged still. Um, okay, we've obviously okay. have the tough tie. I think it got scheduled the other day for November. Chelsea at home in the third round of the Carabao Cup. That's a terrific, that's a difficult tie. Um, for as inconsistent as Chelsea have been, it's still Chelsea. Like you can't right, take right. away their quality. I heard shouts of Sterling at wing back the other night, so like maybe maybe we're we're over pressing it yeah, a little but it's, bit. Yeah, but it's but, Chelsea. Chelsea. Yeah. If we have an off day, it's Chelsea. You can't you can't yeah. just discount them. See, Grand Potter got a uh, got a tape off head now. Now that he's he's in the big leagues. Yeah, there was also Potter out. Say in the big league, that's so disrespectful. There was, there was right. Potter out trending last night when they drew. You leave him alone. <laughs> you leave Grand Potter alone. I hope he's alright. Uh, Tottenham obviously lost two last minute winners. You can't really say out about it. Uh, United aren't in the Champions League. Uh, Chelsea one one. I'm not gonna actually I tell you what. Before we talk about Chelsea, I just asked the Shakhtar and sell the game. That M Mudrick, Mudrick, left winger for them. He's fucking electric. <laughs> he is so so good. He's quick. He can cut inside. He can just bomb down the wing. That man is fan. Fantastic. We said Caduce wouldn't be the type of player I'd campaign for our city. Mildred is the type of player I'd campaign for our city. That's like a fold in the greatish. Marked into one. Can run down. Can go upside. What a fucking player. It's a shame about the haircut though. Uh, I've just seen C sign Sarnate. No, we fucking don't do that over here. We are we are Leroy Sane haters. We don't like them, man. The way he left yeah, the disgrace. I'm, I'm not a Sane enjoyer. Uh, the way he left <laughs> disgraceful. We leave, we leave it there. The man yeah. is. Uh, that, he can, that was it. Just he can snake, en man. he can I... enjoy his farmers league titles while we turn our league into a farmers league. Yeah, uh, that at the end of the yeah. day, listen, you know, you you can enjoy those farmer league titles. We'll enjoy our farmer league titles because that's what we're doing right now. We're turning the fucking Premier League into the Bundesliga. It's very fun for us, not fun not for the rest. Top. Not even time. Uh, I trust me, it won't last. Asna have like uh, nine games in October. Big man is over. Brev, brev. They have. Uh, they postpone their game with us. Which I don't. I don't understand. By the way, I do want to talk about this a little bit. The Eindhoven game. The PS3 game got rescheduled to when we were supposed to play Arsenal in the league. So because Arsenal had their game postponed, we are being punished for it. Also, last season, when Spurs couldn't play their last group game, they weren't allowed to get it rescheduled and they got knocked out of competition Ooh. because they weren't allowed to play that game. I don't understand what the rules are, what is happening. They should have they should have you know, they should have either played it. It, it can't go one way for one team. Can't go one way for one team. Like it was there. I think sports had a code stoppage and obviously this is for the death of the Queen. Like they are two very different situations, but you can't have one team do it. And get a reschedule just to not have the other team do it and not get rescheduled. I think it's completely ass ways. If you have to also, go and play it away, if you have to go and flip it and play it away, just go play it away. Go to PSV yeah. and swap the ties around. Why are we getting punished because the team can't play their game of football? I don't think it's that fair. To be it's honest, not even because... that the team can't play. It's just that that was the unlucky one to get yeah, to get built with. Like but... it, it should have been switched though. You're dead right. That should. should I don't know if it's something to do with UEFA that you can switch it. It's the only thing. I, I'd say it was because of tickets and officials yeah. and stuff like that. But the, at the same time, like, we've already had a game postponed against Spurs because everyone had a game postponed. There, there mm. are then teams getting punished for just names being pulled out of a hat or other teams getting postponements. Like, we've been punished essentially having to fi find a gap to play Arsenal because they had a game postponed. You know, United are going to have to find a gap to play Leeds at some point because that was an unlucky one that got postponed. Same thing with mm -hmm. Liverpool-Chelsea. They're going to have to find, because theirs was, you know, it's complete. They can't do anything about it, but it got postponed. Like, it's unfair on teams. I think it's genuinely unfair on teams, but, like... I understand cancelling the matches, you know, for a weekend, you know, pay respects, tribute. I understand. I do think they chose the wrong week to do it, though. I think they should have done it the weekend of the funeral, I think, because, you know, that's when the lack of police is out in force. Um, but overall, like, at the same time, it is what it is. I'm sure that we'll get knocked out of a cup and we'll play when other teams are playing cup competitions. That's normally how it works. It, it's not going to affect, it's not going to lose us the league. It's not going to lose us the league. It's just annoying more than anything. Yeah. No, you're, you're, dead, you're dead right. I'm just looking at the comments as if my lips. Uh, 
yeah, we can kind of wrap it up there. I think the last, the last kind of semi-British team I want to mention, well, they're proper British, is Rangers. He lost 3-0. That's <laughs> too far. Two four nil losses and a three nil loss on a bounce. You shy cunts. Right. We're gonna wrap it up there. We put what do we end up getting hanging before I wrap it up? Uh, 46 <laughs> likes, I'm saying. 46 likes, 90 I'm watching. We'll wrap it up there. Thanks so much for watching. Get over to the big six. Our man Hugh Murray is over there right now. Share it around. Get us a three and a half K. Okay? He's a he's a good enough. He's already not, he's already not the works. Thanks very much for watching. And we'll see you for Wolverhampton Wanderers on the early kickoff. Don't back the early kickoff. Samara. 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 See you later. <laughs>